Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Regame to the Comp video, a number of viewers have been writing to me asking my opinions on whether they should buy the i7-8700 or 8600K. Well, I figured I'd go through some official benchmarks now that the embargo date is over with. We will be getting our own board over the next week or two, we've been told. Uh, as a slight aside, we're also going to be receiving a Threadripper plus a high-end motherboard. I believe the CPU is in 1950X, if memory serves. That's actually on the way. UPS currently have it with a slight uh, shipping screw-up. Plus, we should be getting a GTX 1080 Ti slash Ti as well. Uh, and there's a couple of other reviews that are almost here. So, basically, the next couple of weeks is going to be like a lot of reviews slash uh, interviews. We have an exclusive interview with Neil Trevitt of NVIDIA as well. Uh, I've already uh, actually recorded that interview, so it needs to be edited. Uh, it's about uh, an hour and 45 minutes long, so it probably has to be split up into a couple of different parts, simply because, well, brevity and all. But anyway, uh, as I said, we're going to be just blasting through some results and giving my initial conclusions. As usual, I've not conducted these tests myself. However, I can vouch for most of the results because uh, when MSI sent me over the Z370 uh, motherboard, I actually was sent um, some results along with that, in other words, what they would be scoring in various benchmarks. And essentially, what we have here is the reviewers getting exactly the same results as uh, this set of results that I was given. Uh, I won't be going through all of the results that are available by any stretch of the imagination. I will link, the, of course, in the video description. This is simply to ask um, a simple question, should you buy it or should you perhaps hold off a couple of weeks? Well, we'll start out with some Cinebench slash synthetic uh, rendering, that type of stuff first, then we'll get into some gaming. So I'm going to say right out the bat, unless you have a very specific reason to buy an X299 uh, motherboard and along with it the 7800X, I would probably say that this processor completely demolishes the any need to get this. Now starting with Anantec, uh, with Cinebench R15, we'll talk about both multi-threaded and single-threaded. Uh, multi-threaded slightly lower than uh, perhaps I had actually initially expected, but not by much. It's scoring about 1350 points, which is around 200 points uh, lower than the uh, 1700X. Now considering the price point of these two processors, especially because the 1700 essentially gets identical clock speeds if tweaked with the 1700X, I'm probably going to say that, you know, if Cinebench benching is your thing, which I don't know why you would just work on doing that, well that's something to bear in mind. However, it's single thread performance which really piques my interest. The 8700K actually pips the 7700K as well as the 7740X to the post. Not by much, admittedly. It's only, you know, two to uh, uh, eight points, depending on the CPU we're talking about. However, there is definitely a major difference between it and the 1800X. The 1800X and their results gets 162 points. So you're looking at around 35 points of difference. What about rendering. Blender is very popular, right? Let's say you want to do something that's a bit different. Let's say you want to do some 3D scene work. Well, uh, we'll talk about a couple of different benchmarks from Tom's hardware. You have Blender, the island benchmark. This is the Blender Loop. Uh, this is a spec WPC official run. They've overclocked their processor to 4.9 gigahertz in one result and just, of course, stock in the other. I'm going to refer exclusively to stock in this particular video because I don't want to give you results for overclocking when A, you may not be interested in that, and B, until I've really tweaked it myself, I don't want to kind of vouch for overclocking. Regardless, the 8700K gets 226 points. I'm just going to round these figures up or down, whereas the 1800X scores 240. Now, of course, these are in seconds. So in other words, the 8700K is slightly faster here, despite the fact that it does indeed have uh, fewer cores available. Another one, another very popular one, and this one is from Hardware Canucks, uh, W Prime. I'm sure most of you have probably ran this benchmark one or two times in your life, especially if you're into, of course, gaming. Uh, w Prime 1024M. So, of course, this is going to be multi core. Uh, 108 points with, oh, sorry, I keep saying uh, points, I mean 108 seconds to complete, whereas the 
uh, 1800X that scores 102. So yes, the additional cores do give the 1800X an advantage, but the 1700X, which is, you know, not exactly a slouch, gets roughly on par uh, results to the 8700K. So in other words, pure clock speed here is really making the, the difference up with the 8700K versus the additional cores. And I'm also going to bring in the single thread performance, once again from Hardback Canux, also W Prime. This is 32M single for, uh, single core test, excuse me. Uh, 28 seconds with the 8700K, which is noticeably better. It's a, almost, well, not quite, but almost 10 seconds, about 8 seconds difference between it and the 1800X. Now, yes, you're going to scoff and you're going to say, well, who the hell, realistically, in these type of scenarios is going to run at single core? And you're right. You're 100% right. No one, realistically, is going to do that. But the fact is, single core performance is notably uh, better. That is something to bear in mind if your application uh, does utilize this. Uh, next one, final synthetic one, and this one's going to be handbrake. I say synthetic, you know what I mean. Uh, this is going to be handbrake. They've scored, once again, Kit Guru have scored um, a 5 gigahertz overclock with the 8700K, which is pretty damn good. Once again, I'm going to focus squarely on stock results. So at the 4.3 gigahertz, they're scoring almost 39,000 points. Now, to put that into perspective, that's within spitting distance of the 40,500 or so points at the 1800X. Yes, of course, I am once again rounding these numbers up, but I don't think you need me to say 40,553 for the 1800X. You can quite easily see that yourself. So what does that mean? Well, without a question, performance between these processes is very close. Productivity-wise, as I said uh, from quite a long time ago, the 8700K is not going to beat Ryzen for video editing, encoding. So if you don't have the money to go with, let's say, Threadripper, let's say uh, an X299 build, then a Ryzen 7 1700, in my opinion, represents the sweet spot. But Paul, you sexy individual, you're probably saying, what about gaming? I don't care necessarily about productivity with Blender. I'm building a gaming machine. Is it worth it? Well, unfortunately, we don't have the 8600K results yet. I'm curious to see how that does. But talking of 8700K, once again, hardware Canucks uh, will go for GTA 5, a very popular game, of course. They're getting 101 FPS. This is with 4 times MSAA, 16 AF. To be honest, I would have preferred them to have disabled uh, MSAA with their tests, but it is what it is, of course. So 101 FPS, whereas the 1800X scores 73. That's quite a deficit. Uh, you're looking, obviously, I'm just rounding this up, around 25%. Overwatch, well, yes, definitely. Overwatch, of course, uh, it's slightly faster in the 8700K, once again, looking at hardware Canucks, but you're talking like 280 frames per second versus a terrible and absolutely awful score with looking at 267 so essentially on this particular title there's absolutely no real difference okay a couple of gaming results from well actually one result from uh, anantech and this one is conducted with rise of the tomb raider this is um a, a valley test average frame rate you're looking at a pretty damn interesting result here um obviously i'm looking at the 1080p average frame rate uh the 8700k is actually beating sorry losing out to the 8400 which is rather interesting they're scoring uh with 8700k 100 frames per second and that is basically identical to the 1800x and i'm going to go through a couple of results also from Eurogamer. These ones are quite interesting, at least to me. This is conducted on a 1080p resolution with a Titan X Pascal, which is overclocked. Uh, all memory is 3000 megahertz. So what they've done um, is actually do a couple of benchmarks. And perhaps the biggest difference, at least to me, is The Witcher 3. You're looking at 170 frames per second with the 8700K uh, versus with a Ryzen 7 1700 at 4 gigahertz, so essentially an 1800X, you're looking at around 120 frames per second. So that is a massive difference in frame rate. 
Uh, I'm going to give you one more result from them. That is Far Cry Primal with ultra settings, 137 frames per second. So that's about 40-ish frames per second difference between, once again, the Ryzen 7. I would argue, however, that once again, if you're gaming only, it's probably not worth jumping from a 7700K based upon these results to an 8700K. Now, in the future, you might decide to feel differently. Um, I'll, as I said, be doing a full in-depth review, but I just wanted to give my thoughts and conclusions right now. So here's what I would personally suggest. If you're only doing gaming, but you want a bit of future proofing because maybe you'll get into some streaming, maybe you'll get into a bit of productivity work, maybe, just maybe, just maybe you're thinking, hmm, you know what? I like the idea of just having those additional threads available. I would say get the 8700K. If you're not quite convinced, which I don't blame you, I would suggest waiting a little bit and getting the 8600K possibly, or just kind of waiting on the sidelines. On the other hand, if streaming, video editing are also big concerns, I would possibly go with a Ryzen 7 build. Uh, Ryzen 7 is probably going to continue to improve in performance as developers get opportunity to tweak and basically engines become more uh, accustomed to AMD's hardware. Final point, if you've already got a very good processor, and a very good processor here, I refer to as something like a 7600K or a 7700K, and you're running a graphics card that's GTX 1060 or roughly on that kind of level, you're gaming primarily, I would probably say, if you are considering between this and a CPU upgrade, uh, sorry, a GPU upgrade, go with the GPU upgrade. That's my personal opinion. Uh, right now, I would say it's still a little bit early to call. Personally, I would suggest if gaming is only your thing, wait for the results of the 8600K because it might save you a chunk of change. But as it is, semantics aside, the 8700K is a very good product. Kudos to Intel for doing this, but also kudos for... Uh, AMD for basically pushing Intel to do this. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video, my friends. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.